come in, come in, ladies and gentlemen, as I almost hit my head on that door frame. That was genuinely close. To show you the studio, because I realize actually for a lot of you, you've probably never seen the behind the scenes of this. And I want to go through absolutely everything that we have in here, obviously make it as interesting as possible, to show you what I actually use on a daily basis, not only as part of my gaming setup. We go through a little bit of the filming gear. I know that's not to everybody's taste, so we'll brush over that as quickly as possible for everyone else. But I also want to show you a room that you've never seen before. No one has seen this before, unless you've been to this house. And I want to talk to you about that elusive water-cooled PC build that we did last year. We did quite a few videos on it. It must have been about five, six videos, something. And a lot of you were asking what happened to that, because if you didn't already know, I made a gaming PC, I water-cooled it, and it just did, it, it, it never really worked. I had to keep tweaking it, and it got to the point where my final fix didn't fix it. And loads of you have been asking what happened to that. I'm going to show you exactly what happened to that, walk you through whether it got fixed and whether I use it or not, and we can finally put that one to bed. But yes, look, here it is. The PC-centric setup, all ready to show you and walk you through everything. Right after a short word from this video sponsor. Oh, that was smooth. Lee and Lee's new Galahad 2 Trinity coolers are here, and by Jove, are they gorgeous. With up to three factory-fitted RGB fans, these coolers look stunning and are super simple to connect thanks to daisy-chainable fan connections and a single L-Connect 3 box. There's even three different appearances thanks to swappable covers. So regardless of whether you're after something for looks, performance, or both, Lee and Lee has you covered. Check them out today with a link down below. Right, let's waste no more time and actually jump straight into it then. And firstly, I want to say a massive thank you to you guys, not for watching, subscribing, all of that usual stuff, but thank you for actually existing because finally my studio is actually reasonably tidy. And if you're thinking this is not tidy, you have seen absolutely nothing. When this is a proper working space, oh my God, it's a nightmare. I think I spent last week going through, taking apart, must have been about 10, 11, 12 PCs because we had a backlog and that took several days, but we have finally got there. We do have a few more on the table. If you haven't already watched my videos on these ITX mini monsters, do go and check them out. This one is called the Mesh Room D. Struggled there for a second. This one is from Fractal. It's called the Terra. I really love the look of this. It's not the absolute most practical case in the world because it's a little bit on the small side, but if you want that, it's fantastic. And then this is the original Mesh Licious. So you can find these videos in the top right corner of your screen. Of course, over here, we have the infamous PC-centric gaming setup. I'll swap over to the world's best cameraman, which of course is me, to actually go through all of this. There have been some tweaks, but nothing particularly major because I'm very comfortable with this and it works. I mean, let's start with a PC because this is something that is actually quite literally on its way out. I will be updating this in the coming weeks. You're probably seeing some B-roll now from about two and a half years ago. That actually shows you how old this is. And it's an Intel gaming PC that's actually running on X299. So this is a 10920 XE CPU. And if I'm honest, it's not the sort of thing I would have purchased for myself. Fortunately, Intel actually had a sample that they sort of lent me and seemed to have forgotten about. Last time I saw the guy from Intel, he sort of went, wait, you still got that? And I think he's forgot to collect it. So it's still sitting there, but it is quite happily water-cooled. And this was a water-cooled system that has actually worked for years. I've literally not touched this. So if you guys want to see a video to sort of walk you through the maintenance or lack of maintenance on this system and what it's meant, then let me know. Because actually everything still works fine. I mean, I did have to sort of clear out the pump a little bit by running it at max speed a couple of months ago. But beyond that, it's worked absolutely fine. No issues with thermals or anything. But you'll probably notice that that GPU is air-cooled and I haven't updated this with anything water purely because at the time I was swapping them in and out all of the time but I'm ready now for something that can sit on this desk and be a little bit more permanent but then also a bit more new. I didn't actually mean to leave this on the top but obviously we work on portable SSDs to produce all of our videos. This is a Thunderbolt one so it doesn't even plug into this PC. The ones we use are over here. I must have about 15 of these now. These are the drives. As you can see, they're labeled when we're working on pre-rolls or something. They go on one of these. They work really well. I hand them over to the editor directly, who's obviously editing this video, 
hello Carl. And then that's how we get all of these videos produced. I'll walk you through the setup and things that we've got here as well. This is not actually the OLED monitor from Alienware. This is a 38 inch ADW38. This is an LCD, 144 Hertz, but with a resolution of 3840 by 1600. And the reason that I use this rather than the OLED that I'll show you in a little bit is because for a mixture of work and gaming, I think this is actually a whole lot better for my personal use case because I want high resolution to be able to see all the detail that we have in the cameras. And also it's just nicer to have a slightly larger screen. So a lot of us are sort of holding our breaths for the equivalent of this in OLED because obviously that would be better, especially for HDR. I mean, the contrast on this is absolutely fine, but it's IPS, it's nowhere near as good as an OLED. But from a practical standpoint, and obviously the fact that if you're doing spreadsheets and things that are gonna sit on screen, you don't have to worry about burning quite so much, it is definitely quite a cool choice. In terms of the peripherals and things that I'm using, you probably think it's a little bit odd that I have two mouse mats, and yes, that is very true, but it's because I'm lazy. I need to buy a USB hub to replace this. For the time being, I've actually got a mouse mat on top of a mouse mat. We've got our MX Master 3 mouse. This is fantastic for work, but then I do use the Logitech G Pro or the G Pro Superlight when I'm gaming. These things are fantastic. They were provided for a sponsored video, but I recommend them over anything. I would buy one of these tomorrow if they broke. They are awesome. This is the 10 keyless version of the G915. This is absolutely my favorite keyboard. Again, I absolutely love this thing. I've used quite a few others and I am excited actually for one that is down here. Here's a little sneak peek. They've sent this out for pre-rolls, but this is called the K70 Max. And this is a brand new keyboard that I haven't been able to talk about until now, purely because it's under NDA. But this is the first keyboard I've heard of. There might be some others that have done this in the past. This is a brand new Corsair keyboard with a brand new Corsair switch that you can actually change the actuation point on. So if you want something that will be super quick, you can have that, but then if you want something that's a bit harder to miss hit, so say you're typing or something, then you can actually enable this in software. And I don't think there are sort of per game profiles and things at the moment, but I know that will eventually come down the line. So you can literally have a proper adaptive keyboard that can essentially be not quite the same as having like a blue, a brown, and obviously a red switch all at the same time, but you're, you're getting closer to not having to pick between the three. It's pretty cool stuff. And the other reason that I'm actually pretty excited about this one is because of the contents of this box. And I've been waiting to unbox this on camera for a while now. Don't have enough hands. Bear with me. Oh, I think I got it, guys. I think I got it. This is a little care package, and I promise it's exciting because it's from Xbox. And look at this. You've got some pretty cool keycaps all the way from Forza to Starfield. But they don't fit on my Logitech keyboard because they use like the standard Cherry MX layout. So I need something that is compatible with, and I'm hoping that the K70 Max will be that keyboard. So that's our monitor and our peripherals. But if we zoom out a little bit, you'll see the chair. And this is from Herman Miller. This is the Logitech Embody sort of collaboration that they did. And honestly, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this chair because on one hand, it is absolutely fantastic, ridiculously comfortable. But then on the other, it's almost like a buggy PC because some of the things are just not quite so well thought out, like these armrests, for instance. I've tried to demonstrate this quite a few times. I'll see if I can get it to work now. But they essentially don't go down as much as I want them to. So you end up sort of like bumping this against the desk. I want to be a little bit further forward because the whole point of this chair is that you're meant to sit upright in it. But then the problem I have is that I'm no longer close enough to the keyboard and the mouse to actually be resting up against the chair. So I feel I'm either leaning back far too fine and stretching my arms or I don't have the back support, which is the whole point. And you might have noticed this if you listen carefully in some of the like voiceovers I do, mainly really in the pre-rolls. It's a really squeaky chair. A really squeaky chair, and for something that costs over a thousand pounds, it should not be squeaking. Oh, and actually, that reminds me, this is the angle that we actually want, because can you notice that this whole ceiling has been treated with acoustic foam? I've had this for getting on for a year now, and honestly, it works a real treat. I wouldn't have necessarily thought about this, but I've got a friend that's like into music and sound and does like studios and things, and he said the first thing that you actually want to do is to treat the ceiling, and I admit that's probably not what I would have thought to have done, but again, it, it works wonders. It's so much better in here, and it's weird because people walk in this room and they sort of notice it without noticing it because you can hear the difference. It's pretty cool. I also want to thank Editor Carl, actually, for long-term lending me his C-Stand, because this is the infamous overhead camera that we have set up. 
And yes, it is stable. I mean, it hasn't fallen down yet, and this has been up for about six, seven, maybe even eight months or so now. It's not the most secure looking thing in the world, but I promise it works a treat as long as you've got everything cabled and set up properly. It's pretty cool. It gives us that extra angle, and hopefully it makes the videos look even better. But more importantly, that they're easier to follow when you're doing like a PC build or obviously an unboxing, it makes it a bit more immersive. For those that haven't already seen it, this actually traveled with me from the last setup. Highly recommend doing something like this with your tools. It makes it a lot easier to manage than all of our PC bits and bobs and things. This was originally too big, but now it's far too small. This is where we keep sort of odds and sods. So I guess fixings and things. Here we've actually got all of our spray paints and things that I never use. We also have some water cooling fluid and things up here. Google Nest that we use for heating and hot water. I actually recommend that, it's very good. It genuinely does save you some money. I also realized we haven't discussed the speakers. These are still the Bowers & Wilkins 685S2s. I absolutely love these, I've had these for ages. While well, I have made an upgrade to the downstairs of my house, these have actually stayed the same. They've got these orange cones that don't really work with the color of the setup anymore, but the sound on these are still phenomenal. If you do want to get yourself some pretty decent speakers, I imagine these on the used markets are pretty cheap now. Highly recommend. But yes, sadly, they have been discontinued. I mean, I say they've been discontinued. They've been upgraded, so you can get even better ones now. Corsair also provided the Elgato Stream Deck. I think it was last year now, actually, for some pre-rolls, but I've kept using this particular one because it is a little bit more useful with the dials, but I think this is still overkill for most people. The mini that I use downstairs probably makes a whole lot more sense. Headset, this is quite an old one now. You can see what happens to headsets over time. Don't think you're going to be immune from this. If you do actually use a headset for a while, they will start to fray. That's the original HS70, but this has been updated. We've got the Corsair headphone stand here. We've got a wireless Xbox One controller, and then this is the Gato Wave microphone. Again, we sent this out for some sponsored stuff, but I love it, so it has stayed on this desk. So this is the PC-centric setup, sadly before it all starts to change when we swap this thing out. I need to know what case to build in. Give me your suggestions. What water-cooled system would you like to see and what case shall we put it in? Oh, and this is what I mean, by the way, about getting so used to your setup, you actually forget to sort of state the obvious. If you haven't seen these before, these are the Nanoleaf lines, and this was the collaboration that we did with Nanoleaf last year. And I think these are probably the most interesting of the RGB shapes that they do, because some of them, well, they all look good, but I think some of them almost look a little bit toy-like, whereas these look a lot more like serious business and a bit more, I don't want to say professional, because they're RGB lights, but they look a little bit more deliberate and a bit more high rent rather than some of the other ones that can look a little bit plasticky but still have a lot of cool lighting and things. I'll walk you through what a lot of you guys will probably want to see which is the graphics card wall. Most of my stuff is in storage now, we don't actually keep it at the house but all of the graphics cards that I am using in videos at least for comparisons or build and things can I just park here for a little bit before returning to their home. And the size difference of these cards are insane. I mean if I grab the smallest one in the collection which is the 4070 FE. It's a really nice looking card, this one actually. Still runs very cool and quiet because it's quite an efficient GPU. But then you compare that to something that is quite literally bigger than my face by quite some margin, the 4070 Master from Gigabyte. I mean, look, here's a size comparison between the two. Look at that. It is absolutely ridiculous. Going down a section, we have our CPU collection. Here is everything Intel, or at least current enough to use Intel. Then down here, again, we have current enough AMD. We do have a collection of older CPUs as well, but those are sort of stored in drawers. This was originally meant to be the fan cupboard, but unfortunately I've filled this up, so it is overflowing now into the storage unit. But if I want to grab some RGB fans, this is obviously where we come. SL Infinites are over there. Those are some of the best ones I think you can get at the moment. But obviously the new Corsair QL stuff, or the QX I should say, is probably the best RGB fan, but it is very, very expensive. Here we've got odds and sods. I think these are the fans that I'd use in my personal rig. Then this, I don't know why I'm showing you this. This is awful. Let's let's move away from that. This is my water cooling section where we have things like pumps, tubing, radiators, bits and bobs, whatever I need really, heat gun, tools and things. They all go in there. This is my fitting and contact frame drawer. To be honest though, I think those drawers are comparatively boring compared to what we've got over here. I think this is a lot more exciting. And it's mainly these two because this is the SSD drawer where we keep all of our SSDs between builds. They sort of live here. We've got a few new ones like this one from Sabrin. I don't tend to 
really get rid of these for security, so they're just gonna live here. We also have RAM as well, mainly DDR5 now, but we have some DDR4 as well. For older builds, I also bought the cheapest set I could find of DDR5, and I'm gonna be testing that in a few videos time, which should be fairly exciting. I'm gonna skip through this quickly because there's not really anything interesting here. We have some RAM that doesn't fit in the drawer, more fittings. Then we have odds and sods in both of these. I call them odds and sods because this doesn't really work properly. These are for a power supply I don't think you can buy or even exists anymore. Then we've got tools and things that I don't use. Uh, this is similar, we've got a label maker and like some color stuff, microphones and things living here when they're not being used. This is a little bit more interesting because we have the thing that actually makes our live streams possible, the Atom Mini Pro. Essentially, this is your little control switch to make sure the cameras are actually on the right feeds. You plug them in the back and fundamentally you plug this into the internet and one button and you are go, no computer required. Anything up here, this is where we used to do mice, but we don't cover them so much on the channel. And yeah, this was also the phone drawer, but as you can see, we don't really have any left because we don't really cover phones anymore. Of course, as well, we also have the other side of the room. Definitely not so interesting because this is basically just floor space, really, for where we put the lights and obviously put the cameras and things. I mean, the cameras might be interesting to you. These are from Blackmagic. This was the original one I had, which is why it says Cam 1 on it. This is a 6K original. We have two of these. We have a cine lens on this one, which is ultra wide. And then here we have a, a Sigma ultra wide, I guess, but it's got a zoom on it. And then we have a 4K Pro again with an ultra wide lens for our overhead. In terms of the lights, I do need to update these. These are ones from Elgato. They're just thin, which is why I use them and fairly portable, but they're not the best. They do the job, but I could do better really. Microphone, I never really use this one, but this is the Rode NTG4 Plus, I think. It's a pretty cool microphone, but it doesn't really work for me because I'm moving around too much, which is why I use this lavalier. You then sort of like either click your fingers or slap your face to sync it up in post and then hey presto, you've got better audio. And I don't know if there's anything else to show you in here actually. You've seen most of it. I mean, I guess people are nosy. They're probably gonna see what's in the cupboards. This is a little bit of a dumping ground for either bits that I'm using personally. They go up top, which is why we have our, oh, it's a 6K G2, not the Pro for the overhead. There you go. Uh, all of our just bits and bobs that we're using and then this is a bit of a dumping ground really just for parts that are currently in a system but need to be taken apart and then go back in the boxes. And oh yes, there was one other thing I wanted to show you in here before we show you the top secret room that you haven't seen before and that is just some additional RGB lighting that I will be upgrading to. This is some stuff that Philips Hue have sent out for the studio. We've got two lighting strips. One actually goes on the back of your monitor so I'm hoping that can go on the back of this. This is a gradient strip that will go on the back of these. I did have some LifeX lights back there, but they stopped working, so they need to be replaced. And then this is a massive hue bar type thing. It's actually one of these, but it's full size. So I'm hoping that that will give some nice light in the back of the studio that you'll be able to see when we're doing some filming. But let's waste no more time and show you the top secret room. And I will note before you see this and before I trip down the stairs that it is gonna be a little bit different to the other stuff that you've seen because this is not supposed to be like a YouTuber gaming setup. This is meant to be like a shared space for the two of us, as you can clearly see. And this is basically where Thea plays Planet Zoo. But if you look over here, look, you will see this is that infamous gaming PC that was water-cooled. And as you can see, it does live and I am using it. However, did I actually get around to fixing it? No, which I know is a bit annoying. Essentially, it runs fine, but it runs hot. So if this was like a normal gaming PC, you would say, oh, I might upgrade my cooler at some point because the thermals while gaming get to like, I don't know, 75 degrees on the CPU, 55 on the graphics card, but that's still a context problem actually between the CPU and the block. So I need to replace the block on that to get the better thermals. But because I'm never running this at like 100% load on the CPU, it's not something I needed to do soon, which is why we are still using it. But you guys might be able to help me out actually, because there's also a little bit of a new problem with this. Hold on, I'll take the glass off. That's better look. Now you can actually see inside and admire what I was at least trying to do. I mean, I still think that this is the best looking gaming PC that I've put together. I mean, all of this was hardline, bent by me, and I think it turned out really, really well. It's just a shame that for whatever reason, as I say, the contact between this CPU block and the CPU 
was never fantastic and it's not got the best thermal. So this is a 12900K. The GPU is last gen, it's a 3080 Ti, perfect for Planet Zoo, but I also am using this at the moment to play Diablo, a little bit of Surviving Mars. This is like my casual gaming setup when I sort of want to be downstairs with the dog and just sort of enjoy more fast paced gaming rather than the Alienware upstairs that's obviously bigger but I guess more immersive but it's more work orientated really. This is an OLED monitor though as you can see this is the Alienware ADW34 something and we've got that underneath with a Sonos soundbar. I wouldn't actually recommend this one this is the Beam they sent this out and didn't want it back so I've been using this but I would genuinely buy a Ray if this was my own setup and have that underneath have it in white because it's a really cool little soundbar, good sound solution. It's fine as is, but you can actually use it with one of these sub minis as well, but then it gets very expensive, and to be honest, I'd probably just get dedicated speakers at that point, but it's a cool little setup if you're already invested in the Sonos ecosystem. We have a Stream Deck here that I need to actually set up. There's not really too many things I would use it for other than swapping between the audio from the Sonos and then the headphones. These are the Shure 1840s, very, very good headphones, open back, not for someone else playing loud music to get away, but it's just fantastic to have that sort of sound quality. This is one of those Cool Master Puck things, by the way. Oh, let's not do that. Bear with me. But yes, you get the point of this. Very, very strong magnet on that and allows you to have your headphones on the front of the PC. In terms of the keyboard and things that I'm using, this is actually a wireless keyboard. This is the RG Claymore 2, but I'm using it in wired mode because to be honest, I'm not too fussed about the wireless functionality. And if you do use it in wired, then you can put your mouse wireless dongle into that. And this is my absolute favorite. This is the G Pro Super Light. Again, was provided, I think, for a sponsored video a while ago. Like, I love working with Logitech because their stuff is just so good. So use that for mouse, and then this is my full-size keyboard, mainly really because this can attach, or detach, I suppose. You can do both. If you're gonna play like Apex Legends or something, you can take it off, but then if you're gonna do some boring accounting, then obviously you can use that as a number pad. And as you can see, it's on the other side. You can put it where you want. Mouse mat isn't the PC centric mouse mat because I actually only have one. I really need to buy my own mouse mat. That would uh, probably help. I'm sure they can send me one, but they haven't. Well, they sent me one, not two, which is actually big sads. As you can probably tell, we are also using a webcam. This one was supplied by Corsair. This is the Elgato face cam. And then we have a chair from Noble Chairs. They supplied this last year when we did our sort of Ikea chair versus mid-price chair versus the Herman Miller video. That's a very cool one, top right corner of your screen. But I believe this is the Noble Shares Icon and it's in this sort of fabric finish that I really like. It's in anthracite gray. Highly recommend this chair. Not a massive fan of having to use a lumbar pillow, but all things considered, I find this very comfortable and it's something I would recommend. So there you go then, the secret setup. What do you make of that? Definitely not the best from a uh, acoustic point of view, as you've probably noticed. But I think it's really, really useful for us to sort of use and share. And I know, right, obviously having multiple gaming setups is not exactly the most, um, what's the right way of putting this? It's not the most realistic thing for everybody to have, especially sort of that level. But when you're sort of messing around with hardware all the time and you actually want to sort of use it so you can make recommendations and know what works and what doesn't, obviously it does pay dividends. I mean, I think the fact that we have that water-cooled PC there does show and sort of prove that point because how would you sort of see the long-term problems if you like if you weren't able to properly test them so while most computers that do get made up do get taken apart more or less straight away where possible i do like to use them for like a prolonged period of time so we can sort of discover and iron out any issues but anyway that's that's it that's the new space i hope you like it i hope you've enjoyed it i mean what do you make of the color by the way i need to actually do the same for this wall, I think this will be like a winter set. So we get Editor Carl round and we're sort of painting this a different color and then we have two sort of different sets, I guess. Oh, and one more thing. I think the newest thing to this whole setup, it's a work item. It's actually this little setup. Look, it's me. This is the Sony FX30. It was to replace the A6500 that was very much on its last legs. The autofocus on this is better. Quality is better. I've got a little light on it as well so you can see me. And this is like my vlogging or a bit more personal set up if you like but yeah there you go that has been the pc centric setup tour 2023 loads of changes are about to be made please let me know what i should do about this sort of gaming pc because i want something that's the same sort of size but fundamentally something i can water cool and make look 
fantastic. I don't know whether it's going to be Intel or Ryzen yet. I think I'm leaning towards AMD, but let me know your suggestions down in the comment section below. I need case, I need water cooling ideas, I need theme ideas. Honestly, the works. So let me know what I should go for down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, then obviously smash that like button and get yourself subscribed. And if you do want to check out literally anything that's featured in my gaming setup, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not gaze into the RGB light of the new Galahad 2 Trinity coolers? Available in black or white with RGB, performance or SL infinite fans and in 240 or 360 configurations, there is bound to be a cooler that takes your fancy. Not only that, but thanks to thicker tubes, a new copper plate, 45 degree angle fittings and a whopping 5 year warranty, you know your PC cooling is in safe hands. Learn more about them today with the link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, we'll catch you in the next one.